just about 5 p.m. I have plenty of time for another match. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Five loaded in for RS. Two, three, four, five, six for Toro. So Toro has an F14, an F14, an F14, a MiG 29A, and two F16 Block 50s. I'm I'd like to see what their strategy for the F16s is. Because I'm really not sure if high altitude or low altitude is the ideal for the F-16 in this. On one hand, at low altitude, you can really surprise people with your F-16. Uh, if your GCI is on top of things, you can pop your radar on and then pull up and, and get right onto a guy and knock him out before he knows what hit him. On the other side, if you're at high altitude... You have a lot more maneuvering options. You can uh, haul ass and get away from a missile that's fired at you. Give that, give those sparrows a lot of trouble, potentially. But then um, you also have the advantage of your look-down look, look down radar works. That's something not a lot of other people have. Looks like Toro has two MiG-29s, an F-16, and three F-14s. I definitely expect to see a lot of F-14s in this competition. They are quite the versatile aircraft, even if they don't have the best look down capability and if they don't have the best turning capability, they're still quite formidable aircraft with a good good missile payload, eight missiles, four four Fox twos, four Fox ones, four Fox ones is the limit in SATAC, if I'm not mistaken. MiG-29 is just on the airfield waiting to load up. That is not a bad option save you some taxiing fuel, and then just sit on the runway and rearm right before you're ready. We have seen other teams do that with their drop tanks, pulling them off and putting them back on before they call ready, but they're already on the runway. Okay, kill-death ratio by airframe and weapon. Yep. I will have to figure out how to get everybody's skins because Airshow has not told me how to do that other than find somebody and ask them, uh, which has not been very descriptive. ABMs, AICs, huh? Oh, air intercept control? The MiG-21 is flashing his light as if to say, or MiG-29 is flashing his light as to say, please hurry up, guys, please, I want to go faster. Toro is still warming up their engines. All their taxi lights are on. It looks like they are getting ready to go. I hear engines spooling up. There goes the first F-14. It's taxiing onto the runway. Which runway are they taxiing to? That is, yeah, that makes sense. That's the one point of the right direction now, after all. Like seeing aircraft lined up on a ramp. It would be really cool if uh, they all spawned right next to each other, but I can see, uh, I can understand why that's not done because of how the slots work. Siripot has gotten yet another confirmed kill. Good job, good job. Be gone, bot. Do you guys think Siripot uses Fox 1, Fox 2s, or Fox 3s to kill bots? Or, uh, I guess it can't be Fox 3s since this tournament doesn't allow Fox 3s.
All right, we have both teams taxiing to the runway. Looks like RS slash 404 is ready to, uh, mostly ready to go. They're stationed quite a dif quite a distance apart on this runway. I wonder why that is. Is this just for style points? You got a MiG-29 and an F-16 up front. And you can definitely see that these aircraft are of similar sizes. MiG-29 is a bit heavier, which is why the F-16, in uh, real life at least, has the turning advantage. Although it can easily be out, out, uh, out turned based off of loadout and uh, fuel. We see more of the airplanes taxiing. Yes, yes. Uh, any criticism is welcome. I have never done this before. An air show refused to give me pointers. He wants his monopoly on his, his good skill. Twin engines would be heavier. Yes, of course. Got the two F-16s bringing up the rear. Part of me wonders if I should make like a a controller profile to control this so we can have smooth camera action. They're lined up three Tomcats abreast in a fantastic looking formation here. Moving up a little bit. Somebody forgot their brakes, or maybe this is intentional. No, no, they're just spreading out a little bit more for the camera, I think. It's an interesting choice to have their heaviest aircraft first. I wonder uh, how much time lag they're going to need. We'll keep an eye on those, those F-16s in the rear. All right, teams, are you ready? Toro is ready. I I really want to watch the Toro take off. We're going to watch the Toro take off. Normally, we'd get a chance to watch each, but in this case, we only have one match to watch. RS is ready. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go, go, go. You hear those F fourteen engines spool up already. First F-14 is down the runway. Second one is rolling. And the third one. Let's pop over for a quick look at RS. RS has the MiG-29 and the F-16, their front aircraft taken up already. Oh, and a formation takeoff of the F-14s. This we can't miss. You gotta, you're getting a little close there. You gotta, you gotta use some rudder. Oh, one's got tanks, the other does not. One of them has taken off without missiles. He has no misses at all. That is an, a bold move. I wonder if, if Whiskey just forgot to load their missiles. That is a big handicap. We'll see if that is going to come back to bite them. The MiG-29 is taken off. The F-16s are rolling now for Toro. Sorry, I am fighting uh, my mouse not being locked to the window here. So I can really only scroll so far in one direction. He can land if he doesn't enter the circle.
camera for his moment of realization. I think he has uh, realized it now. Yep, he has realized his mistake. Whiskey has realized his mistake and he's coming in for a landing. Four hundred and fifty knots and dropping. Doing some S turns to try to slow down. We'll see how well he can stick this landing and how quickly he can stick this landing. This is gonna be one of the most hurried landings, but he has to do it right. Because if he messes up this landing, he might crash and he can't re-slot because his wheel he's already been wheels up. But rearming is gonna take him a couple minutes. So either way, they will be down in F14 for a little while. Isn't this a, a fantastic treat in SATAC? We get to watch a landing before the match has even really begun. 200 knots. This is a little fast of a touchdown, but I'm sure the F-14's gear will handle it. This is a Navy fighter after all. 180 at touchdown, and he's down. All right, let's watch what the teams are doing. Toro is already 14 miles out. They're at about uh, a range of altitudes. The F-16s are at 12,000-ish feet. Oh, I was picking up that AWACS. I was wondering why one is at 32,000 feet when everyone else wasn't. Mustang and Werewolf are flying low altitude 20,000 feet in the F-14As. And then Kistoy and Fur-109 in the F-14A and MiG-29 are flying together. Ah, uh, it's okay. This these mistakes happen in these early matches. You got to figure them out quick. Wyvern in a MiG twenty nine is flying low. It's like what we saw on um, on the match against LYS. I am immediately forgetting their names because it's not in front of me. Their F-16 is at 20,000 feet, F-14 at 30,000. I really wonder how the F-14 radar, how well the F-14 radar works at high altitudes. I've flown a fair number of planes in, F in DCS, but I have not flown an F-14 before, so I do not know much about how it actually works, what it's like to fly one, what it's like to be the, uh, the Wizzo for one. It's going it's a deep, steep climb, reaching 30,000 feet. They're up high. Uh, I definitely think a high-low approach is a potential good option. You give the enemy something to worry about while you also give um, them something they can't see. A 14 is a great model. I have already promised that my first... My first Navy jet is going to be the A7, so I cannot fly the F-14 until the A7 has released. Which, maybe we'll get some more updates on the A7 soon, since Flying Iron is uh, finished with their BF-109, or Baka Wolf 190 for Microsoft Flight Sim. When the A7 comes out, I will fly the A7 in uh, in SATAC somehow, and it will go about as well as you would expect of a short little ugly fighter. That thing is slow as heck, and it only gets, I think, two Fox 2s. You can turn off the main lobe clutter filter on the Tomcat. Oh, uh, Sarge, I'm going to need that in English, please. Both teams have entered the ring. Uh, Zenek in his MiG-29 is, is falling behind, and Whiskey is coming in for their second takeoff. Four Sidewinders and four Sparrows, although the four Sparrows look like they're in a different location than I'm used to on the Tomcat. Where do the other Tomcats have them? Nope, that's that's how it is. I thought they were uh, 
two rows of two by two. Nope, they're straight. Okay. A7 and F8 are great. Ah, oh, man, I can't wait for an F8 either. I know the F8 is going to be a challenge because uh, I think there's a statistic like the F8 out of all, all of the 500 airframes that were made, only two were not involved in accidents over their lifespan, which tells you how good the F8 is. <laughs> Although a lot of that is due to their use on the smaller carriers in the fleet. But they are they are one of a kind aircraft. They are really cool. I, I would love to have my hands on both for DCS. A7 is high up there. F, an actual F16A is also high up there. F16A would be fantastic. I know we've got a F16 quote A end quote in SATAC, but this this F16 has a lot more capabilities than it really should. Um, not really anything super decisive. It's got a little bit of a better radar. It's it's got it's got IFF, which the F sixteen A doesn't have, and then uh, it has the horizontal situation display, which is something the F sixteen A does not have. So your navigation is done entirely through the, or sorry, the it has this horizontal situation display. Uh, the F sixteen A, your navigation is done entirely through the horizontal situation indicator that most other planes have, but it has a tack in and a nav mode, so you can navigate to your waypoints through that. It It is a bit of a limit on your situational awareness, which is uh, a soft downside. A good pilot can definitely make up for it, but if you're, if you're not used to it, it can be a challenge to deal without your HSD. We see Honey Badger and Yosef still flying in pretty high, 34,000 feet, 23,000 feet. I... I do think F-16s high up is probably a good move because you do have that look down radar when most of the other aircraft in this do not. And that it's a smart way to use your capability. But we see Alpha and Zenek coming in at high altitude. 40,000 feet for the MiG-29. 40,000 feet for these F-14s. People are going for the high altitude shots. I guess if you've got F-14s and you're fighting against F-14s, the high altitude isn't a bad option. No, people can't get up to you that quickly if you're at 40,000 feet and they're at uh, 8,000 feet in those mountains. Your GCI, if they're on top of things, they should be able to pick them out before you can really get within a uh, Fox 1 range with what we've got in terms of Fox 1s on this competition. Wyvern is splitting north, going low. Looks like they're trying to confuse the enemy so that he can come in and pincer later. While Kistoy and Fern are coming in uh, high and wide. All of Toro is up pretty high. Uh, it's interesting that the F-16s are not following quite as high. They're at 23,000 feet. Uh, an F-16... An F-16 with its loadout, with its air-to-air -air loadout, could definitely come up higher. They could do about 30, 35,000 feet, I'd think, depending on uh, fuel load and tanks. We're getting close to the first missiles being fired. It looks like Kistoy and Honey Badger are vectored onto each other. Dice is vectored onto Kistoy as well, so it's two versus one. And we've got the first missile in the air, an AM-7, fired at about 15 miles. Kistoy has fired one back. Let's see where if we can see where these missiles are coming from. They've crossed each other. Will these missiles hit? Uh, I think Kistoy is at his gimbal limit. But that missile's coming in quick on him. I think he's dodged that missile. Yes, he has. No hits. Werewolf or, or Mustang. I didn't quite catch that. One of them has fired an AM-7 at Yosef. Will it pay off? Dice has fired an AM-7 at Kistoy. Will he dodge this? I 
I think he is safe from that missile. Yeah, he has dodged that missile. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We still have six versus six. Nobody's gone down yet. Zedek has fired an R-27 at Mustang. I don't know if Mustang has noticed this shot yet. Where is that missile coming from? I think I was told there's a keybind where you can see missiles coming in on somebody, but I forgot what it was. Unfortunately. Honey Badger launches an AM7, looks like it's at Ronki. Nobody is getting into uh, dogfights here. They're not bonsai charging. They are, looks like, basically setting up a cap grinder. I think that is probably a pretty safe option with the AIM-7 Sparrows. You still have a decent option. Uh, weapon view. I know F6 is the weapon view, but I'm talking about the, the uh, view that lets you see a padlock from a target. Uh, from a plane to a missile coming in on it. Dice fires an AM7 at what looks like Werewolf, but I don't think Dice sees Asper down below, 8,000 feet below him. This AM7 is coming in hot. And that is the first blood of the match by Dice. Dice dodges the resulting AM7, likely uh, due to it having lost all guidance. Mustang fired an AM7 at Yosef. But no avail. Uh, somebody else got went down. Werewolf got hit. Actually, I think Werewolf might have had a CFIT since it didn't say anyone was hit. Uh-oh, did Kistoy just fire on a friendly? Mm, nope. Looks like he, he missed, at least if he did. Alpha Whiskey is coming in high and hot. Yep, Alpha Whiskey is going to be coming in to help out. It might be timed just perfectly. The enemy may have forgotten about him. Zenek fired an R-27, but it looks like it smacked into the ground. Uh, oh, man, we've got a couple of awesome dogfights breaking out. Oh, somebody had a C-Fit. Honey Badger C-Fit. Uh, is coming in on Yosef. I don't think he sees him. Yosef is right on the tail of Fur. Come on, F-16. Come on, F-16. I believe in you. He fires an AM-9. And splashes him. Taking out Fur in the MiG-29. We have another exciting fight here. Between a MiG-29 and... I forgot to see what that other aircraft is. I think it's an F-16. Classic pair up. Yep, F 16 versus Mig 29, and it, uh, Zenek takes out Ranky, but then gets taken out himself by Asper. We are in a two versus three. Wyvern is hot on Kistoy's tail, and Whiskey is coming in real hot on Asper. This is going to be a hard fight to come back from, but I believe. F-16 with four, four spears to throw, and F-4 with three. I think there is a chance to, a good chance to come back from this. Whiskey has fired an AIM-7 on Asper. Let's see if this missile hits. It looks like there's clear enough ground that you can't get ground occlusion here. As long as the radar keeps that lock, I think this missile will be in good position. Although it might be kinetically defeated. The F-16 is quite fast for that. Wyvern is hot in the tail of Kistoy, and I think he just took someone out. Yeah, Kistoy just got taken out by Wyvern. It is three on one in favor of... Uh, 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 is this missile going to hit? Is this missile going to hit? Oh, and he takes out... That was a, a fast and exciting match. This is what we're coming to expect from Satak Cold War. F2 and then F5. Yeah, F5 C goes from a plane to a plane, but somebody was saying that there's one from a plane to a missile. 
So if I do this, it locks you onto the nearest plane. All right. Now RS just has to make it back with at least one plane and land. I see Alphagator is uh, specifying own base. I don't think we've... I don't think that's been specified before in previous years. I wonder if uh, a mistake has happened to make that uh, required to be specified now. Control F6 slaves the target to the missile. Ah, okay. Thank you, Alphagator. Tag is running now too, and they're required to the enemy base. Ah, okay. That's a good point. Just want to be clear. It it pays to be specific. Let's see what weapons you have left. Yosef with four AM nines. Wyvern with Three missiles I don't know the name of because I don't know anything but Western missiles, unfortunately. I need Airshow to give me a coach. And Whiskey with four Sidewinders and two Sparrows left. Whiskey, who started with no missiles, has gained missiles in the course of this match. That is an impressive feat to be sure. Hello, hello, Mr. Airshow. Can you uh, educate me about... Can you make me a missile cheat sheet? Because I don't know about Eastern missiles at all. What are these things? I know they're heat seekers. I don't know what they are. Oh, he knows I'm watching him. He's he's giving off a show. Ah, uh, man, this, this is making me really tempted to pick up the MiG-29 at some point. Uh, but I might hold off for the full fidelity. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of the full fidelity aircraft. I don't know if I really want to do a, an FC3, but I am glad that FC3 is an option in DCS. It's it's a great way to get newer players into the sim without overloading them with information. The cope version of the flanker. Yeah, who knows. The, uh, the MiG-23, or MiG-29 is supposed to outturn the flanker, so it it is supposed to be like a, a contemporary to the F-16 lightweight fighter. Full fight at LED MiG-29 coming, the only reason you're still alive, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited for the MiG-29, I'm still holding my breath for a MiG-23 as well, I believe that it'll happen at some point. Or not five matches. Uh, only three matches until elimination. This thing goes well and you get 230 MK from DECA after the J8 is done. You want to reconsider after the easy, early access release of the J8?
Uh, I would like to stick around for interviews, but I have other engagements that I'm going to have to go to myself after this match. I wasn't expecting to get pulled into another match. So we'll we'll finish this up. And sorry, I won't be able to interview RS or Toro, but next next time around, I'm sure I'll see you guys around. Looks like the F-16 is, is going to aiming to be the first to land here. No problem. We gotta get Ace a good match to go to. Also, I need more. I need more training on how to do this. I don't know what I'm doing at all in terms of streaming this. An F-16 with his burner on. This guy hates fuel, doesn't he? Well, G turns here. Instruments were messed up. Oh, oof. been there, done that. I was doing some dogfighting in an F-16 the other day. And uh, I had a match, matchup, F-16 versus F-14As. And I was like, oh, this is going to be easy. In DCS, the uh, F-16 does have like a, about a three degree per second turn rate advantage over the F-14A. So I was like, this is going to be a piece of cake. I, you know, I, I see the bandit, I roll into him, and I, I start pulling to turn into him. And I pull nine Gs and black out my pilot immediately. And uh, I just G lock myself, and I had to beg Sharklet to bail me out of that one. Otherwise, I would have been dead to rights because it was two versus one. It was a bad situation, but it was fun anyway. Streaming DCS is hard, yeah. Uh, the the hard part is also all the other other stuff going in. This air air show kind of did just leave us off, and was like, "Hey, go get the skins." But where where do I get the skins? <laughs> It would have been helpful if Airshow took us under his wing. Not metaphorically, but literally took us under his wing, because he is he's a Su-27. He has a big enough wing to take us both under. He could probably take both Ace and me in our F-16s under his wing at the same time. I am liking more and more my idea of hooking up a con game controller and binding it to the view controls and trying that out. Because that might provide a little bit of a better experience for y'all. F-16, my love. Oh my god. I, I cannot express in words how much I love this aircraft. I know the F-16 is not the best aircraft, but it, it is a great aircraft. You said skins, someone said your trigger word. Yeah, I did not know how to get the skins for everybody. So we don't get to look at people's flaps and see any, uh, any Easter eggs. Blank your head butting the F-16 in the bearing straight. Yeah, I looked at that video and I, uh, I, I saw it within the first second and I went, Bird Slicers, this is an F-16 cockpit. Knows immediately what this aircraft is by looking at a, a singular video. Give me your skin. Sarge, do you need, you need my F-16 skin? Isn't it already in the nuts pack? Totally don't have 500 gigabytes of skins installed. Oh god, yeah, that's how it goes. My my hard drive is going to be dying after SATAC with all those skins. All right, we get to. It is time for my favorite pastime in DCS: judging other people's landings. Got a nice flare and a gentle touchdown.
MiG-29 landing time. Oh, Sarge, you're trying to say that you want people's actual skin? You can have the actual air aircraft skin. Oh, there goes his tank. And his air brakes are out. I wonder if uh, he can't drop those air brakes out with that tank. I think this is the first time I've seen a MiG-29's air brakes. Those are some beefy looking air brakes. And what's this little, uh, little pipe in the back for? Do we have any uh, MiG-29 specialists here? No air brakes in the tanker gear. Uh, see, I'm so used to the F-16 where you always have your uh, air brakes out when landing. And it really does help in a lot of other jets too, even if you're not supposed to. Because it, it makes your engine run higher on landing, which lets it spool a bit quicker. He doesn't have any gear down yet. Is he aiming for... Uh, Oh, there's gears coming down. A little wobbly. He's floating. Go around, go around. But he has a nice touchdown. Uh, completely flying into the ground. I think he popped... Yeah, he popped one of his tires. I don't know how he popped one of those tires. That looked like a pretty soft landing on my screen. Bye-bye, tires. We got an F-14. Not landing quite yet, just doing an overfly. I wonder if they're going to do an overhead break. Landing at light speed, not using the parachute. Yeah, what's, what gives with SATAC players not using parachutes? Camera on the right side. What if I want to be on the left side? It's coming around. I think he gained altitude from this. Yeah, I think he was at 2.9, he's at 3.3. .3. Not quite how you're supposed to do the overhead break. Well, why don't you write him, write him a letter telling him he did it wrong, Sarge. I cannot wait for the A7 to come out also, so I can have all the, uh, the my friends who fly Navy jets make fun of me for my carrier landings not being right. Put the shootout, it's just not synced. Ah. Uh, it's gears down. Give him a phone number to copy. Yeah. Hanging in the air with this F-14, 160 knots. That's a real slow speed. Single number in the Lua. So now it's the only one that is visible. As a visible shoot in multiplayer, huh? Air brakes are out. Oh, and they're back in. I I do wonder if the F-14's front camera helps out at all in this competition. I, I imagine it might help a bit. Especially if, if your, their team is using all their own skins and doesn't have the other team's skins at all. Then you know the other teams all in probably default skins and at least not your own skins that you're able to see.
No direct lift control. Helps push the thing down. Yeah, doesn't it have flight spoilers on top? Supposed to be out and no DLC. I'm going to need you guys to say things in English for me. Because uh, you're talking in F-14 speak and I can't read F-14 speak. But Whiskey is down and down safe with a nice gentle landing. Uh, I don't think he's gotten the understanding that the F-14 is a Navy jet and it needs to be set down hard. But with that, it is a victory for RS. If I can get the right, right number here. They know how to fly that thing. Oh, but they're not used to flying it on carriers. All right, that's match. Uh, Alpha, is there anything I need to do to wrap this up officially? Nope, you got it. All right. As I said before, I don't have time to do interviews, unfortunately, so I'm going to take off. Thank you all for watching, and big thanks to our contestants, RS and Toro here. I will be back again for the next SATAC match that gets doled out to me. Thank you all. Bye-bye.